friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to start my Lisa Jewel reading vlog. I have three books here. I want to go through them with you. Um, I'm probably only going to get to two, but I might get to the third. Also, I want to talk about the books that I have previously read by this author. If you don't know, I have read four other books by this author. I started off with I Found You, which released in 2016, and it has like the amnesia trope, the person never existed trope, Trope. Really enjoyed that. Rated it four stars. I also read Then She Was Gone, which came out in 2017. I rated that three stars. I read Watching You earlier this year. It came out in 2018, but I rated it three stars. And then the last and most recent one that I have read was her last release, which was Invisible Girl. It came out in 2020. I read it in 2020 as an arc. Um, not my favorite. Rated it three stars but looking back it's probably two stars I don't know it's always hard to really judge on arcs but I have been so lucky getting arcs of Lisa Jewell's books I got I found you I got the invisible girl and now I have a copy of the night she disappeared which if you don't know is her 19th novel I had no idea that Lisa Jewell had such a healthy backlist but I want to read three of her books in this video. I'm going to read this one that was kindly sent to me from Atria Books. Um, like I said, this one is an ARC. It goes on sale on September 7th. Also have The Family Upstairs, which released in November 2019, and it's just been sitting on my TBR all this time, because as you can see, I got it from Book of the Month. So yeah, I want to go ahead and read this one finally, and then I went to the library the other day and I was checking if they had any other Lisa Jewell books and they had The Girls in the Garden which I love this cover so much and this one sounds really really good. <laughs> out of the shower. Daniel is on a conference call. I am plopping my hair because it was wash day and I have on my robe and I grabbed my book and I'm gonna sit here and read for a little bit while my hair dries a tad in my body because I just put this robe on wet. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Gonna read. excuse my hair right now <laughs> what the heck is this <laughs> I just got home from the chiropractor and I wanted to give you a reading update on the family upstairs also I want to apologize I have not been the best at vlogging my experience reading this or telling you anything about it but I'm here to do that right now I'm a little confused to be completely honest there's like several different main storylines I'm sure they're all going to intertwine but it's basically about this one woman that on her 25th birthday she gets the house that she was found at when she was a baby so when she was a baby um, her family and other people were found dead, but she was perfectly fine. So she was adopted by this woman, raised, and she doesn't really know anything of what happened. She doesn't know what happened to her, um, brother. Her, I think she has like a brother and a sister. She doesn't know what happened to them. Um, she doesn't know anything about the history of what happened or anything like that. And then we're also following um, another point of view in Chelsea, like in the 80s. And that's Henry's point of view where we're getting, I guess, when he was younger and people started moving into the family home and stuff like that. And kind of what that entailed, what went down and stuff like that. And then there is another woman who has two kids, is homeless, is down on her luck. 
um, and a dog and she's trying to like get out of the country and go to London. So I don't really know if I'm just missing something or if it's just going to all come together in the end. That's kind of what I have found about Lisa Jewel books is that I kind of just have to trust the process and enjoy the experience and the understanding um, will come at the end. I am on chapter 45. I have made it to page 237 and it is 338 pages. So I have 100 pages to go and things are definitely coming together. I know how the different storylines weave themselves together finally and man i'm wondering the end game because craziness anyway um i did want to mention that it does have like lgbt themes and it also has like these light cultish vibes like commune something sinister also this herb psychedelic garden possibly and I'm just loving the vibes so so far really enjoying it um I'll let you know what I think when I finish it up because I've just been reading all afternoon um okay I just finished this and I think I'm giving it four stars you guys it was so good um it did drag in parts it did definitely have like a slow start as well like I said it's classically sigil it has multiple points of view and it was in different like timelines or at least they all felt like different timelines and me I very much like like straightforward narratives with twists but Lisa Jewell does not do that and I kind of like that that she like mixes it up and is different than other thrillers I read it makes my brain work a little bit harder and it also helps me work on my patience with thrillers because so often I'm like just tell me but like she makes me work for it aka read the book you know I always know that they're going to like the POVs are going to interconnect at some point and obviously the whole time you're reading it you're just like what is the connection what I liked about this one is it is kind of sort of an inheritance plot it's also a bit of a I don't know self-discovery because um oh Another reason that made it confusing is there's too many L names. I think it might just be too like Lucy and Libby or I always, <laughs> I don't remember their names. Lucy and of course I can't remember that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like the L names, but I really liked this one. Like I said, slow start to the beginning. Um, you basically find out that this girl has just this woman it's her 25th birthday. She has been told that she's been left this house. It's this, it's basically like this mansion. And she goes there and she's just kind of like, she doesn't know much about her past. She was adopted and her parents, uh, her adoptive parents told her that her parents died in a car crash. But there's been some articles written and stuff like that, that there was this suicide pact and that the people in the house killed themselves and that she was found perfectly fine as a baby and was basically adopted out well obviously she thinks there's more to that story like why did these people kill themselves who are these people all of this plus there's the mystery of whatever happened to the children that were living in the house um so yeah so it's very very interesting i liked the cultish vibes i liked the lgbt representation i liked the mystery i liked how everything was revealed it would like reveal little things but not like the whole truth all at once you know what i'm saying so you definitely have to read the entire book to really appreciate the masterpiece that it is the only reason that i did bump it down a star is the pacing the pacing is a little off like I said it's very slow in the beginning and then the ending although that is when things were being revealed and stuff like that it does drag a little bit um, so but the middle was super mysterious cultish vibes and I was loving it so um, the family upstairs gets 
four out of five stars for me. So this is my second Lisa Jewel book that I'm giving four stars. Um, if I wasn't like a super picky, like pace person, I would definitely give it five stars because the story itself was stellar. I got my book of the month package and I thought I would share with you guys what I got. Um, although if you follow me on my podcast, Instagram, talk bookish podcast, um, I do put out the picks and I get you guys to tell me what you picked. And then if you answer what you picked, then I tell you what I picked. So that's a way to find out before anybody else. But here I am going to open up my box. I got two books. I couldn't say no. So, oh my gosh, look, I had to get the love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I think this is a debut. Um, when a fake relationship between scientists meets the irresistible force of attraction, it throws one woman's carefully calculated theories on love into chaos. So I love that. It's kind of giving me the soulmate equation vibes with like the science behind the love and stuff like that. Um, it's just really, really cute. Look at that. Then the one that I actually picked was, of course, Ali, Alice Feeney's new book, um, Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I am obsessed with covers like this that have like trees and just snow and stuff like that. Um, I love aerial shots. Uh, so yeah, so this is about a husband and a wife. Um, I'll read you the little thing. It says, 10 years of marriage, 10 years of secrets, and an anniversary they will never forget. Uh, so I kind of want to read this this month too. Oh, cute. It has cute little chapter headers I could be reading instead. Playing games. Update. I didn't get to read too much last night because I played my game with my husband until very late. Then I watched two episodes of Big Brother and then I went to bed and started reading. I did read a little bit though. I read 18 or I'm on page 18 so I read 17 pages. Um, so just the first couple of chapters. The first chapter was following um, what's her name again? Kim. Her daughter Tallulah. Tallulah? Tallulah. Tallulah has a baby. So it's Tallulah, the baby. Uh, Kim is the grandmother. She's 39. Um, so they all live together. Tallulah, Noah, the baby, and then Zach, Noah's father. Um, and they went out on like a date night and Kim is watching the baby. And then in the second chapter, we're following, oh, well, Kim realizes that Tolua and Zach never came home so she's trying to figure out like where are they why didn't they come home all of that I think that's going to be the night she disappeared uh and then the second chapter um it's like a year and a month later we're following two different people Sean and Sophie and even though it's a man and a woman like I hate when there's similar names when there's like two L names or two S names because I always get them confused but in this one, it's Sean and Sophie. They've been together for six months. Uh, they met when Sophie came to Sean's school to give a talk about publishing and writing to his A-level English students. And now they have moved together to Maypole House, which is this like private school. Um, and then that was that chapter. And now we are back with um, Kim trying to find out where Tolua and Zach are. kind of figure out how the two timelines interact so where Sophie and Sean moved in there's some woods behind their place that I think they're staying like on campus um and then this lady comes over she's the matron for the students but she goes and introduces herself to Sophie and Sophie asks her like what's through those woods and um she's like oh, you don't want to go too far into those woods. They go on for miles. You'll get lost. And so he's like, yeah, but like, where do you come out? You know, where do they end? And she's like, depends what direction you go. Um, she's like, there's Ugly Fold Church, Village Hall, a few houses. And then she's like, and at the back, 
and there's a big house, dark place it's called, empty now, it belongs to a hedge fund manager from the Chanel Islands and his very glamorous wife. Um, their daughter was a student here for a while, actually, Scarlett, amazingly talented girl, but I really wouldn't recommend trying to get there. Students head over there sometimes because there's an old swimming pool and a tennis court. Um, and Scarlett is the girl that um, Lula, Tallulah, that's where her and her husband were, I guess it's not her husband, it was her boyfriend, the people that had the baby. Um, that was the last place that they knew that they were. I just wanted to do a quick check-in. I haven't been reading that much today, but I'm gonna cart this book around with me around the house all weekend because I'd really like to finish it this weekend. I am currently on chapter 18, page 107, so not very far. Um, I was just sitting outside. My husband is mowing the front yard, and I was just sitting in the back on the Adirondack chairs, and it is such a a pretty evening that's kind of what the vibe is outside I'm gonna sit over there in the Adirondack chairs I made it halfway um, between yesterday and last night and early this morning I made it to chapter 33 page 208 and it has 403 pages so hopefully i'll make another big chunk today possibly finish it i don't know um but one thing that i did like about this story is that it shows the tie-in between the different timelines fairly early on whereas in the last book the family upstairs it took much much longer to discover how the storylines you know overlapped and intertwined so i did like that about this I will say that lisa jewel's books don't tend to be very fast-paced books and they're more mysterious and like creepy than like thrilling and page turning um but i do like that we're getting to know the characters really well and build suspense so oh my gosh you guys i am currently on chapter 39 page 250 and oh my gosh wow that's all i can really say but all right i just want to do a quick couple of updates because i'm about to take a nap <laughs> um it's the afternoon it's the weekend i'm feeling a nap so I'm currently on page 260 and I did want to say I checked in at the 250 and like freaked out because like oh my gosh but it was very like oh my gosh but at the same time it was a tiny bit not realistic that that would happen but I'm overlooking it because I was still like oh my gosh um, a couple of other things that I wanted to touch on is that one of the main side characters in this story is bisexual and she has been with both men and women and I really appreciate that representation. So in this one and the last one that I read, there's been bot, well, there's been LGBT rep. So in this one, it is bisexual representation, and in the family upstairs, it's, I guess, gay representation. I'm not really sure it didn't sp specifically say on page, but I think it was like male, male, so we'll go with that. Um, so yeah, there is the bisexual representation in here, and like I said, she's been with both. Um... So I'm thinking that, you know, since this is coming out this year, like in a couple days, that Lisa Jewell wrote this in 2020 when we had a pandemic. And it's 400 and something pages and I still have, you know, quite a bit to go. Um, and I'm thinking it's still probably a little too long. It feels like we should be wrapping up, but I mean... I have this much more to go so I can't imagine that it would need to be this much longer I think authors definitely did have like more time to write because of the pandemic and stuff like that so I think that um, maybe some of their books were longer than usual um, not really sure but this definitely feels long and in-depth 
but I'm enjoying it. I'm not saying I'm not enjoying it. I definitely am. Great news. I finished it The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. I'm giving this one four stars as well, you guys. It was so good and the ending was so satisfying and definitely not what I was expecting. Now a few takeaways after reading two books by Lisa Jewell back to back. I love that she's including LGBT representation. I can't speak to the representation but it seems good and healthy and all of that so we love to see that. Um, I also noticed that most other readers feel like the beginning and the ending parts of her books are the strongest and the middle kind of drags a little bit. I'm the opposite. I find it hard to get into her books because she does like multiple POVs, multiple timelines, and I'm trying to piece all that together. And then the end of her books they drag on a little bit you know like I said I do think it's a little long but I think you get a very clear picture of what Lisa Jewell wants you to get a clear picture of and the story and everything that happened like there's no missing links there's no holes in the story or the plot um you know exactly what every character you know had to do with everything where they are now all of that and I appreciate that but four out of five stars highly recommend you pick it up especially if you have enjoyed other Lisa Jewell books um, just know that there are multiple timelines there are multiple like main characters um, it's going to take you a little bit to get your grounding it's more mysterious than it is thrilling um, it is set in this like private school so it does have you know that setting but it really is about like a mother and a daughter relationship uh her daughter disappeared and she's desperate to find her or figure out what happened to her and it's just oh, man it's great so four out of five stars for this one and then since I still have time and I finished those so quickly I am gonna read this one The Girls in the Garden by Lisa Jewell since I have it from my library I might as well go ahead and read it um, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and start collecting Lisa Jewell's books um, I used to have a couple and I have gotten rid of them but I think I just want to collect all of her books even if they were only like three stars. So I'm going to be looking at second sale and I'm going to look at the book exchange and like thrift stores and stuff like that. I'm not in a rush but I am excited to start collecting them and I do want a finished copy obviously because this is the ARC. Um, yeah so four out of five stars. I'm so happy you guys two four stars so now I have read I think I had read four five six like six Lisa Jewel books and three have been four stars and three have been three stars that's amazing <laughs> great news this one is available from hoopla the next morning i have started the girls in the garden i made it to chapter four page 35 so not much um and of course like classic lisa jewel fashion I'm confused because there's multiple points of view. I'm trying to get my footing in the story and find out what's going on. So I don't have too many thoughts, but um, it looks like this family, a mother and, two and her two daughters, uh, moved to this new house, apartment, I don't really know. Um, and then the girl, one of the girls is writing her father saying, you know, how are you? We miss you. Um, and just drawing little pictures to kind of send him. Let me see if I can find some of that. Here is a little drawing of um, like her and her sister's bedroom set up. Here's what the back looks like. Like they say that they have like houses in the back and then there's like a park and stuff. Here's some of the people that she has met. I thought I would touch 
space about the girls in the garden by Lisa Jewell. Um, earlier, obviously, I was very clueless what was going on and how to explain my initial feelings. Um, I was only like 30 pages in, and like I said, in classic Lisa Jewell style, there's multiple POVs, there's multiple timelines, and you don't really know what's happening. You're not grounded enough in the story. And even though I'm on chapter 10 now on page 90, I'm still a little flustered and trying to put it together because there's so many characters and it's hard to tell if this is more being narrated by the children, specifically Pip, or if it's adults narrating it as well. I don't know. So it feels like there's multiple POVs, but we're definitely hopping around and lots of different characters going on. So I wrote a couple of notes here on the back. Um, so there's basically like three main families. Like I tried to explain the neighborhood, there's like a set of houses. And in the back, there's like three acres of this like park, backyard garden secret garden area it's all gated in so everybody in that little space knows everybody and Claire Wild and her two daughters Grace and Pip are kind of like the newest additions and I think they're more of like the main characters um, because Claire's husband Chris I think is his name is the one that's schizophrenic burned down their house or their house burned down. I don't know if he was responsible. Um, and he went to the hospital, got on some medication. Um, but they had to start from scratch. They're living here now. Um, and then there's two other main families. There's Adele and Leo Howells, uh, with Willow Fern and Katkin. So they have three daughters and then there's Cece and Tyler Redno. Um, Tyler is 13 years old and there was this other girl part of that family I think it was Cece's and that's it it looks like Cece but I'm sorry it's how they pronounce it in the audiobook is Cece um, might have been her sister I'm not sure but Phoebe died or was found in the garden um, when she was 15 years old she died and they weren't really sure what the causes were um, so, I'm also getting a super weird vibe from Leo, the father of Willow, Fern, and Catkin. And even Pip kind of saw him being friendly with Tyler, which is a female. Um, she's 13 years old. Uh, she, They were over at the girl's house and he was in a room. He was in Willow's room, I think with Tyler and they were holding hands and kind of like being kind of cuddly with each other, like leaning heads and stuff. And Pip just thought that was really, really weird. And then um, Adele invited uh, Pip, Grace and Claire over to the house. And, you know, Pip was telling the mom, like, I really don't want to go. And she was like, yeah, I don't really either. But Claire really does want to go. So we'll go. We can like pop out early and Claire can stay and play if she wants. And Claire was like getting really dressed up, a lot of makeup, you know, all of this. And I'm just like, oh, is this guy a freaking creeper or what? Hey friends, I'm here to wrap up this reading vlog. I finished reading The Girls in the Garden last night and I'm here with my final thoughts. Um, it is definitely my least favorite of the three that I read. I'm rating this one three stars. I was a little confused why it was told like from an adult perspective and from a child perspective. I definitely think Pip was the main character of the story and it could have just been told from her point of view. It's hard to, for me personally, to really enjoy a book like this because Lisa Jewell is very heavily character focused rather than plot focused specifically in this book. Um, in the very opening uh, chapter, it like the very first part uh, is 
following Pip as she finds her sister Grace like unconscious and bloody and it was all like after the events of this party and then you immediately go into the first chapter a timeline leading up to the event and then we have the after you know obviously we find out what happened and all of that uh this story is much more like heavily character focused than plot focused like i said because you know right away what you're leading up to and you're you know and there's so many characters um some are more important than others and I find that some of the characters and some of the plot points, uh, specifically like this one granddad coming to stay with the family, um, Pip and Grace's dad being schizophrenic, um, those just felt unnecessary. Like, why was their dad schizophrenic? why did the grandfather come stay with them? It was all to add more red herrings so that the reader would kind of like suspect maybe they had something to do with it. Uh, yeah, so not my favorite. I did write a lengthy like Goodreads story graph review. Um, I wrote reviews for all of these books. Um, so I'm actually going to just go ahead and link all of those in the description box of this video. But my overall thoughts are that I am so happy that I read these books and I definitely want to continue reading Lisa Joel. I want to dive into her backlist. I did order, I believe, her debut novel. It's called Ralph's Party and it seems very different than like the stuff that she is writing now um, but I would love to read the debut well obviously because I ordered it um, but just to see like how far the author has come not only in like genre and writing and all of that but yeah I just kind of want to just binge all of her books. I want to own all of her books so I'm definitely on the lookout for at like second sale the book exchange so that wraps up this lisa jewel reading vlog thank you so much for joining me i hope you're all having a lovely day or night and i'll see you guys again in another video very soon bye